I'm Timmy Moffat. And I'm Afshalom Kasker. People often ask us, how does the Dunedin study collect its data? To answer this question, we've prepared a short video to introduce you to the age 45 assessment of the Dunedin study, which is taking place from 2017 to 2019. Specifically, we wanted to take a few minutes to show you how we're taking the Dunedin study in new directions, from a study of child development to a study of aging. Actually, if the truth be told, it's the study members who are taking us in this new direction. The Dunedin study is a longitudinal study of a thousand babies born in Dunedin, New Zealand in 1972-73. The children have been assessed repeatedly since age three, most recently when they were 38 years old, with a retention rate of 95%. They're now 45 years old. We're here in Dunedin collecting new data. We show you this slide of Dunedin because some people think it's a fishing village. Really, it is a city and home to the world's southernmost university, which hosts the study. At each age, we bring back the participants for a full day of data collection. This year, we're happy to do so in a new building, purpose-built for the study. The data collection for a phase takes about two years because we're able to process three study members per day. We want to take you through a data collection day that every study member experiences by following Lily. Now, Lily is not a study participant, but she was born in 1972, which is the same year that the study members were born in, and Lily has agreed to help us document the assessment day for this video. Lily arrives at the research unit at 8.10 in the morning. The day begins with discussing informed consent with Lily. The first specimen we collect is urine. From there, Lily goes through a series of assessment sessions, each in a different room run by health professionals. The first session assesses vision. This session includes many tests, including a scan of the optical nerve and a video of the eye's moving lipid layer. We also image the retina because the vasculature of the retina gives us a window onto the vasculature of the brain. In this session, we also take facial photographs to study facial aging. The second session is audiology with several tests of hearing. One of the tests measures Lily's ability to detect speech and noise, first given to the children when they were 11 years old. We're giving it again because detecting speech and noise becomes increasingly harder with aging. The third session is devoted to neuropsychology. We administer the Wexler Adult Intelligence Scales. We also give a diverse battery of neuropsychological tests. These tests have been repeated across the waves of the study, which is the general strategy that we follow for many of the measures that we will show you today, as we seek a balance between repeated measurement and novel measurements. The fourth session addresses musculoskeletal health. We assess walking speed and balance with the gait right, this is a long padded walkway with electronic sensors that measure temporospatial parameters of gait and balance. We assess pain experience and pain pressure threshold. We gather anthropometric data. We get a full body scan among other things, this measures bone mineral density. Blood pressure is assessed with an extra measure of postural hypotension. Session five is devoted to respiratory health and cardiovascular health. This has been assessed repeatedly since childhood. 
There are tests of lung function, including a whole body plethysmograph. This is used to measure airway capacity and resistance. Also included in this session is a test of cardiorespiratory fitness, which is measured with an exercise bike. The first half of the day ends and the study members are served lunch and given a much needed half hour break. The afternoon begins with social demographic interviews, which cover finances, work, relationships, lifestyles, and revolve around a life history calendar. Over the years, we've gathered a complete month-to-month -month record of each study member's life. Session 7 involves interviews given by clinicians to assess mental health, substance abuse, and illegal behavior. We also assess reproductive health and sexual behavior using a computer-assisted interview. Because this is after lunch, we intersperse these sessions with tests of physical function to keep blood moving and keep people awake. Here you see a chair stand test. This is much harder than you might think. Here you see physical function tests of grip strength and balance. Session 8 is by far the day's favorite, a dental examination. The dental exam has been repeated since the children were seven years old, but the dental imaging you see today is a new addition. We complete the day with a blood draw. Yes, that is a lot of blood. The blood samples feed into our biobank, including genome-wide information and various biomarkers, ranging from standard panels to more esoteric biomarkers. The biobank is important because it allows us to track the physiological integrity of multiple body systems over decades. Study members have had a long and tiring day, but their ordeal is not over. After a good night's sleep, they come back the next day to the scanner for brain imaging. This is a new addition at age 45. In the scanner, we collect structural, functional connectivity as well as clinical data. Even after the face-to-face -face assessments are done and Lily goes home, we continue to collect data about her from government administrative sources about social welfare, crime, and health. Study members also give us consent to check their credit ratings. All of this data collection is supported by a diverse portfolio of funders from multiple countries and multiple disciplines. Data generation and data analysis are carried out by wonderful teams of collaborators based at Duke University, King's College London, and the University of Otago. These new data represent the midlife outcomes of study members tracked for 45 years. They're also the baseline for our future research on aging. We look forward to more interesting work coming out of the study. Thank you for watching our video.